Okie dokie. Hi, guys. This is video number two. This one um, for today is going to be about a review of natural selection with viruses. So basically, you know that one of the main topics on the quiz on Thursday is going to be natural selection. Um, and if you were in class last Thursday, we looked at this graphic organizer. Um, and these are the four steps of natural selection. So step one, there has to be natural variation in a population. Step two, there has to be a potential for the population to have more offspring than can survive. Step three, there has to be a struggle for survival. And step four, some organisms have to have more success than others, meaning that there has to be some sort of trait that's advantageous that some individuals have and other individuals don't have. And if we have all four of those steps in place, then natural selection can occur and the population can change. So we're going to be looking at viruses and as an example of this. And in the agenda, which I will also post um, to Google Classroom, there are three links that I've put here um, that you can check out that have more details about what I'm going to be talking about. In particular, this first one, Evolution from the Viruses Point of View. Um, I think it's super interesting and I think you will also find interesting. It's a little old, but all of the content is um, still super accurate. And also I think it feels super topical for the uh, situation that we are currently in. So I would highly recommend um, reading this website. But we're gonna do a brief summary of the concepts from it just as a review of natural selection. So step one, natural variation exists in the population. Viruses are really good at this because viruses um, are constantly having mutations in their genetic material. So they are actually not really great at copying their DNA. Um, their uh, viruses are notoriously inaccurate when they're copying their DNA. And what that means is that they end up having a lot more mutations. And that would be an issue for a multicellular organism. But for a virus, this is actually a great thing because it means that the virus um, has more natural variation, which means that there's a higher chance that there's going to be some individuals with an advantageous trait. So yes, there's definitely natural variation in the population of any virus group. Next, step two, is there a potential for more offspring to be produced and can survive? Yes, this is pretty much always yes. Individuals are always going to be able to make more of themselves than their offspring, than um, the potential for offspring to survive. Step three, is there a struggle to survive? Yes, anytime a virus is not inside a host, it's struggling because it actually can't do anything until it has a host. It can't reproduce on its own, as you learned hopefully in the Amoeba Sisters video. Once it's inside a host, it is also a struggle to survive because the host's immune system is trying to attack it and kill it. Um, so time is precious for that virus and it only has so much. It's constantly in a struggle. Step four, do some organisms have more success than others? Okay, yes. And here's obviously the key for any natural selection to occur. So depending on what the mode of transmission is for this virus, that changes what is more advantageous. So for example, cholera. So um, cholera is transmitted through water supply. So when there is... Um, so the way the cholera gets transmitted is you have one person, they get very sick, they poop a bunch basically, or throw up and all this, and it ends up in the water supply. And then um, it, that gets transmitted to another person. Or also maybe someone's taking care of that individual and so they get it on their hands, etc. And then that next person has it. That's how it's transmitted. Which means that cholera, in order for that the more advantageous trait for cholera is to make the person super, super sick. So they're having crazy diarrhea, throwing up, etc. So that the bodily fluids get transferred like that. So that's one situation. But for many other viruses, it's much more advantageous to actually not make your host super sick. So for example, HIV is a sexually transmitted virus. And um, 
for HIV, it's really advantageous to not make the host super sick for a long time because they need to make sure that the host is well enough to have sex so that they can sexually transmit this um, virus. Um, or the common cold doesn't want to make the person sick because the way it gets transmitted is from sneezing, which is only going to happen if people are coming into contact with other I mean, they're going to sneeze on their own, but they're only going to transmit it to someone else if they're coming in contact with other people. So they've got to be going about their daily life sneezing on other people um, in order for the virus to get transmitted. So it's um, these are the different examples of different things that can be advantageous for a virus um, depending on its mode of transmission. And like I said, this is explained also really well on this um website. So read that for more examples. But basically, long story short, this is a good example of natural selection because as a result, viruses that are able to um, find a way to make sure to keep their hosts alive long enough to transmit themselves are going to be the ones that survive to reproduce, meaning that is how the population is going to change. It's going to change in that direction over time. So viruses are actually really excellent at taking advantage of natural selection. And again, I encourage you to check out these links. Last thing for this video, what will be on the quiz? So on the quiz on Thursday, quiz 6-1, which will be on AP Classroom, um, we'll cover evidence for evolution. That's from chapter 19. Those are the notes that you took um, during Thursday's class last week um, when we did the jigsaw activity where everyone was teaching each other. And that would make a really good set of flashcards if you're having a hard time remembering those topics. And then also um, chapter 19 and 21, the concept of natural selection, um, which is summarized really well on page 372. That will also be on the quiz. Um, please do note that Hardy Weinberg, which is section 21.2, will not be on the quiz. Um, I will be talking about that more in the next video, but it will not be on the quiz this Thursday. It will be on a future quiz. Some other things you can use to help you study. I've posted, as always, to the Reading 6-1 post some videos and prezies you can check out. And here are also linked in this slideshow, <coughs> excuse me, three videos um, that you can look at as more classic examples of natural selection. So sickle cell anemia, lactose intolerance, and the rock pocket mouse. We watched the rock pocket mouse when you were in 10th grade, so that might be a really good review of um, to help remind you what we learned about in 10th grade related to natural selection. Because this quiz on um, Thursday should be should feel a lot like a review from 10th grade um, with just a few added concepts. Okay, um, see you in the next video.